I love the Lord Messiah deep down in my heart. Said I love the Lord Messiah deep down in my heart. Said deep deep, said down down, said deep down in my heart. Said deep deep, said down down, said deep down in my heart. I love my Christian family deep down in my heart. I love my Christian family deep down in my heart. Said deep deep, said down down, said deep down in my heart. Said deep deep, said down down, said deep down in my heart. I love my brothers and sisters deep down in my heart. I love my brothers and sisters deep down in my heart. Said deep deep, said down down, said deep down in my heart. Said deep deep, said down down, said deep down in my heart. The fuzzy wuzzy caterpillar lived up in a tree. He wiggled long, he wiggled short, he wiggled right at me. I put him in a box, don't go away, I said. And when I opened up the box, a butterfly instead. I know I could not make one, no matter how I tried. Cause only God in heaven can make a butterfly. The squiggly wiggly tadpole swimming in a lake. He wiggled long, he wiggled short, he wiggled like a snake. I put him in a jar, don't go away, I said. But when I opened up the jar, a hopping frog instead. I know I could not make one, no matter how I tried. The hopping frog was made by God, just like the butterfly. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the mommies and the daddies in his hands. He's got the mommies and the daddies in his hands. He's got the mommies and the daddies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies in his hands. He's got the itty bitty babies in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got everybody here in his hands. He's got everybody here in his hands. He's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Don't let the devil it up, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let the devil it up, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let the devil it up, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time, let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine, oh yeah. Jesus called them one by one, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Next came Philip, Thomas too, Matthew, and Bartholomew. 
James the one they called the less, Simon also Thaddeus, the twelfth apostle Judas made, Jesus was by him betrayed. Yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, the Bible tells me so. Well, good morning, boys and girls. It's so good to have you with children's worship this morning. You know, I got to thinking after last week and decided we should have a friend join us and help out with children's worship this morning. So, um, I would like to introduce my good friend, Mr. Rooster. Well, thanks, Mr. Alligator. It's so good to be here with you guys this morning. I was thinking. Yes? Well, since we're talking about inviting your friends, could I invite some more friends to be with children's worship this morning? Well, I think that's a great idea. Who do you have in mind? Well, I was thinking about some of the boys and girls who would normally be in this room. Maybe they could join us from home. Awesome. Let's do that. Then we can bring Mr. Jet in to tell the story later. Great idea. Let's sing some songs. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. With the ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me so. Come on, Tada, come on. Table up in Jesus, the more wrapped up, more tied up, more. Tangled up in God, I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus, I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Oh yeah, Moses and sunbeams from heaven are what I can see. When the Lord is living in me, I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home. Wise man built his house 
house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down as the floods came up, as the rains came down as the floods came up. As the rains came down and the floods came up and the house stood, full stood firm. The, the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. Whoa, the rains came came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. And, and the foolish the man went flat. Oh, Mr. Jed! Can you tell us the story for today? I think I heard it's about our neighbors. Yes, Brewster, I'm coming. It's so good you could join us in children's worship today. And it is time for our story, which comes from Luke chapter 10. I have an idea. How about we invite another one of our friends to say the focus verse with us this morning? Leviticus 19:18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Thanks, Owen, for reading that for us this morning. So, on to our story. Like I said, it comes from Luke chapter 10. A scribe, a man who knew a lot about God's laws, asked Jesus, what must I do to live forever? You know the law, Jesus answered. What does it say? Well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself, the scribe said. That's right, Jesus said, do those things. Well, the scribe said, just who is my neighbor? He didn't really want to love everyone. Jesus told him this story. Robbers hurt a man while traveling on the road to Jericho. They beat him up and took his money and left him lying in the road, badly hurt. After a while, a priest came down the road and he saw the hurt man lying there, but he didn't stop to help. In fact, he passed by on the other side of the road. A little while later, a temple worker came down the road. He saw the hurt man lying there, but he didn't stop to help either. In fact, he passed by on the other side of the road too. But then, a Samaritan came down the road, riding a donkey. And when the Samaritan saw the hurt man lying in the road, he stopped right away. He felt sorry for the man. He bandaged up the hurt man's wounds put him on the donkey that he had been riding, and took him to an inn. He stayed with the hurt man at the inn and took good care of him. Then he gave the innkeeper money for taking care of the hurt man until he was completely well. After Jesus told this story, he said, Now which of these three men was a neighbor to the hurt man? The priest, the temple worker, or the Samaritan? The scribe's question, who is my neighbor, was the wrong question. The right question was, how can I be a good neighbor? The Samaritan was the good neighbor, the scribe answered. He cared about the hurt man and helped him, and he showed mercy. Yes, said Jesus. Now you go and do the same. You see, Jesus wants us all to be a good neighbor to the people around us. Let's have one more friend join us this morning and lead us in a closing prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for creating this world and help all of the people with the coronavirus. And thank you for building, creating all of these people. And thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation, you are faithful to the end. We 
are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe you're all to us. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation, you are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe you're all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. Only Son of God sent from heaven. Hope and mercy at the cross you are everything you're the promise Jesus you are all to us let the glory of your name be the passion of the church let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. You're all to Good morning, church family. We are so glad that you're joining us this morning as we have set aside this time to worship our God together. Uh, we know that we are still in this digital space, but we are looking forward to that June 7th date where we can meet together again. There will be some changes. There will be some differences uh, because of the regulations that are in place, and we're just trying to keep everybody safe. Uh, so we're looking for a letter that we are sending out that kind of gives everybody an explanation of what's going to happen and, and what to look forward to. We hope you're looking forward to that June 7th date. 
But we are so happy that you're able to join us, whether you're in Kentucky or whether you're in another state across this nation or maybe even a different country. We want to welcome you as we sing praises together. Sing out loud and um, give God praises. And as we take the Lord's Supper together, let's focus our minds together on what God has done for us through His Son. Let's worship, sing, praise God together. And let's give God the glory together this morning. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great how great is our God, and age to age she stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end, the Godhead three in one. Five Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Dear God, thank you for being such an awesome God. We are a sinful people, and without your mercy, we know there would be no hope for us to live eternally with you in heaven. Thank you, God, for your grace and everlasting love. Heavenly Father, use each of us and our individual talents to further spread your word. May we purposely seek to be an encouragement to others, an example for Jesus' love for all those around us. We ask you for wisdom and guidance for not only ourselves, but for our elected officials and spiritual leaders during this strange time. Lord, thank you for this time of slowing things down and allowed us to spend more time with our families. Lord, in all things, your will be done. It is in your son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Broadway family. Uh, we're so thankful that you've been able to join us this morning in our vir virtual uh, worship service. And at this time, we're going to gather around the virtual Lord's table to share and to commune together and remember the gift uh, that God gave us through His Son. You know, at this time, it's very difficult for folks to see uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, it's hard to not be anxious and to be worried uh, about the uncertain future. Um, we see this uh, in the world around us where uh, people are becoming uh, attacked by this invisible enemy, as it's been called. And uh, there's no rhyme or reason sometimes as to why certain people uh, succumb to the illness and others uh, seem to not have any problems with it. Uh, but it does give us a certain amount of angst when we see this happening around us and, and the medical community struggling to try to find a cure, uh, but they may not be able to, at least in a short period of time. 
it's understanding about this uneasy feeling and we can kind of think about and understand that to a certain degree looking back at the Old Testament when you saw how the Israelites struggled um, and after they were complaining uh, to, to Moses uh, God sent venomous serpents in their midst and became this invisible enemy that became uh, and, uh, attacking them and causing pain and death among them as well. And in Numbers uh, uh, 21, uh, the people finally turned to Moses after suffering through this. And in verse 7, uh, the people came to Moses and said, We've sinned and we've, we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take these snakes away from us. So Moses did pray for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake, put it on a pole, and then when the people uh, were bitten by the snake, they could look at the bronze snake and they lived. God listened to his people's cries, and God responded. He didn't remove the snakes, but he gave them a way out. He gave them a way to heal. And God listens to us. He hears our cries, he hears our pain, he hears our suffering. And he can't reach down and just take away the temptations in our lives and, and, and not give us free will. We still have free will. But he can give us a way out because we know the wages of sin is death. And we know if we continue in that direction that we will die spiritually. So God has given us through his son a way out and a way to heal. Jesus said this and, and described this in, in comparison to that uh, story in the Old Testament in John three fourteen and 15 when he says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that anyone who believes may have eternal life in him. So we have that ability at this time because of the gift of Christ, because of his willingness to be brought to this earth to live a sinless life and to be put on that cross and sacrifice for our sins uh, to be able to to have the sin forgiven from our lives and and our sins healed uh, our bodies healed spiritually let's go to god in prayer at this time and thank him for that gift heavenly father we are so mindful of the struggles that are going on in the world around us we're so mindful, Father, of those who are in, in anguish and anxiety. Uh, but we know, Father, that these uh, physical maladies that don't uh, compare to the spiritual illness uh, that besets all of us. And we just pray, Father, that as we partake of this uh, bread, as we partake of uh, the body of Christ, that we remember that he heals us from our sins and that he removes those from us and he allows us to have this communion with you. And it's through his name that we pray. Amen. You may have heard a term utilized in the in reference to the pandemic and, and to this virus, uh, something called an airborne pathogen. That simply refers to the fact that this pathogen, this this virus, can be spread through the air. There's an, another term that we use called bloodborne pathogens, and they're similar, but they're spread again with contact with blood. Oftentimes, that's why in the Old Testament, there are many verses and very many laws that talk about not having contact with blood because it could cause harm. We know also, though, that blood can be life-giving. And in medicine especially, if someone has is, is lost blood, if they need or if they're anemic and they're in need of blood, it can save their lives if they have the right type of blood given to them. We know spiritually that we also need blood. We need the blood of Christ, the perfect blood of the Lamb that was shed for us and can remove our sins and wash us clean. Uh, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, let's remember that gift and that blood that still flows for us today. Father, we're so thankful again that we have the ability to come to you through our Lord and, and, and Savior Jesus. We're so thankful again for his gift, for his sacrifice, 
for the pure blood that was shed, and we know the cost was dear, Father. We pray that as we partake of this fruit of the vine that you would help us remember that blood and remember the sacrifice that he made to provide that for us. It's through his name that we pray. You know, this time has been very difficult for a lot of us uh, individually who have lost jobs and lost income. And so financially, we've not been able to provide the same uh, uh, giving as we've had in the past. And that's okay. That's understand it, understandable in these circumstances. Just remember, though, when we give, we're not commanded how much we're to give or even a percentage that we're to give. We're just commanded to give. And the principles that, uh, that, that should guide us are that we should, should give from our hearts and that we're to give of our first fruits and not of what's left over. So even in these difficult times, there are things that we can give at our time. Uh, you can call individuals and check on them, uh, your energy, your love, your prayers, and financially uh, as you're able. Let's go to God to, uh, and thank him for the gifts that he's given us. Our Heavenly Father, again, we know that we are so blessed among nations, we're so blessed among people, and we pray, Father, that you will help us to see those gifts in, in our lives and the things that you've provided us. We pray, Father, that you would help us be a conduit to those gifts, that we should be able to see the need in those around us, and that we would be able to reach out and, and, and give to those people whatever the need may be. We always pray, Father, that you would help us be humble in our giving, that you would help us to give you the honor and the glory in everything. And through this Christ's name that we pray, amen. Today's scripture reading is Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the, er, all the earth bows down to, the, to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us into a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Good morning, everyone. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday so far. Uh, we are blessed to be able to be with you once again digitally. And it's amazing the technology that we have that allows us to do this. Uh, hopefully we could see a light at the end of the tunnel as we are still planning on meeting for the first time back together June 7th. That's the first Sunday in June. Uh, we are working through plans. The shepherds and the ministers are, are tirelessly working through plans of what it's going to look like and what we need to do uh, both for spiritual edification and also for our uh, personal safety. 
We hope that you are patient with us as we strive to, to do things right. Um, just as we changed when we had to stop meeting, you know, we had to overcome things like technical difficulties and, and overcome the uncomfortableness of preaching in front of a camera and, and those type of things. Uh, there's going to be changes as we go back, and we hope that uh, you work with us and we use some common sense when we meet back together so we can safely meet and also uh, be spiritually built up, edified, and encouraged. May 24th, 1844, the world got a little bit smaller. On May 24th in 1884, that was the first telegraph message that was sent via Morse code. And it was sent by Samuel Morse. And the message read, What hath God wrought? And I know that language today seems very strange, but literally he says, what has God done or what has God made? The message wasn't original to him. We see that original phrase from Numbers chapter 23 in verse 23. During Balaam's second oracle to Balak, we see this, this conversation taking place between Balaam and Balak. And Balak, the king of Moab, is wanting Balaam, this prophet, to curse the children of Israel. Uh, the king of Moab wants to be able to go in and overcome them. So Balaam goes up and receives word from God. And it ended up being three times that he goes and receives this word from God. And, and Balaam makes it very clear to Balak that he can only speak and do what God has told him. So during this second oracle, Balaam makes this statement. Look at what God has done for the children of Israel. Look at what he did for them. He brought them out of Egyptian slavery. They crossed the Red Sea to safety. He provided for them in their 40 days wandering in the wilderness. And, and as their 40, day, or 40 years rather is winding down in Numbers chapter 23, he's getting ready to continue providing for them. Continue doing for the children of Israel. You think of that original statement, what hath God wrought? When you think of the word wrought, it intentionally means carefully crafted together. You think of wrought iron fencing, how it's, it's carefully hammered and, and made together to be ornamental. If you think about what God has done for us, it's amazing. I think about how far technology has come since May 24th, 1844. I can pick up this phone, and on this phone, I can do just about anything. Uh, not only can I make phone calls to anywhere around the world, within seconds, I can search anything, I can have math questions answered, uh, which... I remember one day my math teacher telling me you're not always going to have a calculator with you, so you need to learn how to do this the uh, long way when she's talking about algebra. Well, guess what? I have a calculator with me all the time. Not only do I have a calculator, but I have the World Wide Web. And any given second, I can pick up this phone and contact anybody across this nation or across this world. What has God done? What has God done in our lives that we think about that is so wonderful? God is so great. And you can think back on your own life and think about what has God made in my life? What has God done? Maybe you're thinking about a time when you had to move and you didn't want to move or you were nervous about moving or you had anxiety about moving and then you, you moved, whether it was for a job or whether it's for health or what, whatever it was for, to be closer to family. And as you look back on that move, you go, wow, look what God did in my life. Maybe it was changing a job that you were skeptical and changing. And then you look back on it and go, wow, look what God has done in my life. In Numbers 23 and verse 23 Essentially, that's what Balaam is telling Balak. Look what God has done for the children of Israel. He's blessed them. 
He's going to protect them. He's going to guide them. And you have various passages throughout the Old Testament. Uh, the psalm that was read of our scripture reading this morning, Psalm 66. Uh, it, the psalmist is telling them, look what God has given me. Look how great God is. So we fast forward to 2020. And you could look back over this time and you think, wow, look what God has done for us. Look what God has given me. Not only physically, but this morning I want to focus more spiritually. Look what God has done for us spiritually in our lives. And to do that, I'd like you to open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul lays out there for the church at Ephesus what God has done for us. If you go back to the first chapter of Ephesians, we have all these spiritual blessings that we have through Christ. The fact that we've been forgiven of our sins, the fact that we've been redeemed, the fact that we've been adopted as sons. And Paul continues that thought in Ephesians chapter 2 with this concept that we can say, look what God has done for us. I think we need to recognize that daily about what God has done for us. God has done for us what we cannot do for ourselves. God knows best. I, I keep saying that, and you've heard me say that in other sermons, and, and I try to keep saying that in my own mind because sometimes I think I know best. But in reality, God knows best. And what God has given us, what God has intricately woven together for us, what God hath wrought is amazing. We see in Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, listen to the text. It says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air and the spirit, that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Paul lays out for us what we used to be. Before we became a child of God, this is who we were. We were lost. We were dead. We were children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But you see, we don't have to dwell on that past because God has made us right again. What has God done for us? What hath God wrought? The first idea that we see really sets the foundation for the rest of uh, the text that we're going to cover this morning in the idea that first and foremost, look at verse 4, God being rich in mercy because of the great love in which he loved us. God is so good to us because of his love for us. God has made us to love him. But he exhibits the kind of love that we should have for him in the way that he loves us. We know we could turn to passages like 1 John chapter 4 and see that God in fact is love. He's the very definition of love. Through God's love we see in John chapter 3 and verse 16 a verse we've all probably memorized. For God so what? Loved the world. That he gave his only son for us. That whoever believes in him, listen, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Why? Because of God's love. Because of his love for us, he made us alive and raised us up, as we're going to talk about here in a minute. Because of God's love for us, he saves us by grace through faith. Because of God's love for us, he created us for good works. Because of God's love for us, he 
designed a plan of salvation. Because of God's love for us, he gives us the promise of the Holy Spirit. That guarantor of our inheritance. Because of God's love for us, he created us to work for him. When you look down through this text and you look back at your life and say, what hath God wrought? What had God done in my life? The first and foremost thing we need to remember is that God loves us. Think about all the things that he's put in your life, in my life, in our lives, because of his love for us. Going back to that verse in chapter 2 and verse 4, because of his love, he was rich in mercy. Because of his great love with which he loved us. Do we remember how much God loves us? Do we remember daily what we have because of God's love for us? If you can only focus on one thing, the idea that we were brought out of our sins into a right relationship with him because of his love for us. And if we truly understand that, listen, we want to tell people about it. We should be so excited about the fact that God loves me. And I know we say it so much that maybe we forget the, the impact of God's love for us. Secondly, it says that God made us alive and raised us up. Look at verse 5. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. You see, he, he made us alive. He, he brought, us al or brought us out of death spiritually into this, this realm of life spiritually. He, he, he took us away from what we used to be and transferred us into the kingdom of his son. You see, the interesting thing about this idea about God making us alive, a dead person cannot make themselves alive. Lazarus couldn't raise himself from the dead. Jesus had to do it. When a person is dead, they can't make themselves alive. Therefore, we were dead in our sins. Going back to the first section of Scripture that I read, the first basically three verses of Ephesians chapter 2 explains our past state. Who we used to be. We were lost. Do we know that? Do we truly comprehend the fact that only God makes us alive? Only God set us up to succeed. Only God gives breath in our lungs. But here spiritually, God brings us out of this spiritual death, this spiritual darkness, into spiritual life or spiritual light. Not only has he made us alive, but he's risen or he's raised us up. If you go back and you compare verses like Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, where Paul says, we were therefore baptized with him in his death so we can rise to walk, listen, in that newness of life. We have been raised up to walk differently than how we used to walk. We've been raised up to walk not like the world walks, but to walk like he walks. God loves us, therefore he made us alive. And he raised us up. If we continue in our text, he says in verse 6, not only has he raised us up with him, but he has seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is amazing to me because our, 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 our home is there already. He's done that for us. He's raised us up to sit in heaven with him. Our eternal life is already set aside for us. 
if we continue walking in faith, as we're going to discuss here in a minute. We cannot think of this idea of being once saved, always saved. But this idea that what God has done for us, only we can take away from ourselves. Only we can turn our backs on God. God says, I've already done it for you. But he says, walk in faith. Walk in faith as a result of knowing God's love, God's care, God's mercy and his grace. We actively trust in him. And as we continue working through this text, look what else God has done for us in verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. We've talked about love and we've talked about mercy. How, how God's love is great and because God's love is great, he looked at us and he had this sense of, of mercy upon us. Because God is good. Oh, going back to our class on Wednesday night. You know, we talked about the laborers in the vineyard in Matthew chapter 20, the first 16 verses. There was laborers hired throughout the day. Six o'clock, nine o'clock, eleven o'clock, five o'clock, three o'clock. All day long at different time spans, these laborers were hired by this master of the vineyard. But you realize, as we looked through that text, as we talked about on Wednesday night, those laborers who only worked for an hour, they were given a whole day's wage as well. Not because it was fair. But we look at that and we go, that's not fair. But that's right. And that's just because we have a good God who gives us everything who gives us salvation, who gives us victory through Christ. And as you look at this idea, as we understand that God says grace, not by our doing, not by our fairness, not even by our standard. Dan made a great point on Wednesday night. What real master, what earthly master, if you will, would have paid those laborers a whole day's wages that only worked an hour. Well, not. But we cannot uh, misunderstand God's ways, or we cannot try to align man's ways with God's ways. Because God's ways are far better. Therefore, by His grace, we've been saved through faith. Well, what does that mean? That means because we understand God's love for us, God's mercy towards us. And because we understand God's grace towards us, we walk in this active trust, this faith of God, submitting to his word. Because we know he wants best for us, so we trust him. Because we know he's provided for us, so we trust him. Look what God has done. Look around. What God has done for us. Finally, we see in chapter 2 and verse 10 that we have been created for good works. For His good works. Not that we are saved by our good works. But we have been created by Him for His good works. Look at chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Good works. The good works don't save us, but good works is a result of being created by him. Good works is, is a result of, of my faith. Good works is a result of me knowing his love for me. Good works is a result of me knowing that he saves me by his grace. Good works is a result of knowing that he has great mercy. We see this same concept developed in James chapter 2. 
The idea of works has become so misunderstood in this world, in the religious culture. But, but Paul's not saying that, that we are saved by our good works. If you go back up into verse 9, he says, Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. It's not of our own doing. We have not been saved because we are great. Because we're not. All men sin and fall short of the glory of God. But we've been created by him. We are his workmanship for good works. Well, what do those good works look like? Well, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1 and 2, he tells us to walk in love or be imitators of God. To walk in love. To love one another. Why? So when people see us, they see him. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. Let your conduct be honorable amongst the Gentiles. Why? So they can know God. So they can glorify God. What has God done for us? Listen. God has done everything for us. Maybe the better question is what hasn't God done for us? Nothing. Everything I need, God has given me. You see, because really the only thing that I really need is the solution to my biggest problem, and that sin which separates me from God. In Ephesians chapter 2, to these first 10 verses, Paul is explaining to us what God has made for us, what God has done for us. Taking us out of that past state of the first two verses and made us right with him through Christ. God has done great things in our lives. And it's amazing to me when I forget that. How could I ever forget what God has done? I think back to that original quote that Samuel Morse telegraphed from one city to another through Morse code. What had God wrought? You see, he didn't come up with that statement. Annie Elworth was standing there as he sent that message. A young daughter of one of the men who were there. And as she watched that message transmit through this Morse code, something they had never seen before, she made that statement. Wow, look what God has made. Look at what he's done. And I think about going back to how far technology has come. You know, it's been difficult these past three months doing services digitally. But I want to read for you some stats over these past three months. And I want us to be in amazement, in awe at what God has done these past three months. Over all the Sundays we have done online worship, we averaged 194 individual devices that joined us for more than three quarters of the worship service. So that means 194 devices, whether that's a laptop, a computer, a phone, we had 194 on the average, some weeks more, some weeks a little less, but on average, we had 194 devices. Now listen to this. If we said that there's two people watching. Now we know that some of you had 10 people watching because you had all your family there. Or you had five people watching. Or there was three people watching. Some, there was only one person watching on that device. But let's just say that on 194 devices, we had an average of two people watching. That's 388 viewers that watched our services online that were spiritually fed, spiritually took the Lord's Supper together, spiritually prayed together, spiritually sang together. 388 people did that together. That's amazing what God hath done. To God be the glory. Great things He has done. On top of that, on top of the 194 individual devices during the live services, we had an additional 100 more views 
of the worship service per week on YouTube. So now let's just say that's one person watching it. Now we're up to 488 people, roughly averaging watching the services. We gained 181 YouTube subscribers. People saying, hey, I want more of this. Subscribe. Every time the Broadway Church of Christ puts out some kind of Bible study or lesson or service, I want to watch it, so I'm going to subscribe to it. We had a confirmation of 21 different states joining us. The majority of which have joined us on a weekly basis since we started. Not only 21 different states, but eight different countries have joined us, joined you and me. As we sat in our homes on Sunday morning and worshiped God together, were fed together, we took the Lord's Supper together. Eight different countries. And each week, we had an additional four to five different prayer sessions with different people who reached out seeking prayers. Seeds were planted. Look what God has done. I know sometimes we get so bogged down and so out of focus with the negative that's going on and we have to regain our focus just like Numbers 23 and verse 23, just like Samuel Morris typed in that first telegraph, Look what God hath done. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Not only great things that he has done, but great things that he is doing. Great things that he will continue to do. So let's together, let's rejoice. I hope you smile. I hope you realize how awesome God is. And I hope this week you express your joy for what God has done, for what God has made to somebody that you know. If you need the prayers of this congregation, if you want a Bible study, reach out to us. We'd love to study the Bible with you. Let's remember what great things God has done, and to Him be the glory. To God be the glory, great things He has done, so love the world that He gave us His Son, who yield His life and us all and for sin, and open the life in hell. Good morning, Broadway. We're happy that we can be together today and to worship uh, virtually. Uh, hopefully that will end uh, soon. Uh, we're looking forward to the first Sunday in June to where we can uh, be back together. Uh, the elders and, and ministers are working on a plan to make that happen and uh, hopefully we can uh, get all that done really soon. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to be together today and I pray that uh, all of you are doing well and safe. And um, remember those that are uh, out with uh, injuries, uh, having surgeries, uh, sickness, and all that. We pray for all of those and pray that uh, they'll be well soon. Hopefully we'll be together soon and be able to see one another. Uh, and looking forward to that. Have a great day. Let's pray. <clears throat> we got there for this day and... 
thank you for the blessing you've given us and give us an opportunity to worship you um, through technology in the comforts of, of our homes. And please be with those that are less fortunate than we are, that don't have the options that we have to worship you um, so freely, so independently. And also be with those people who have suffered physically through um, and, and financially through some of what we've dealt with over the past few months. Please be with those that are in leadership positions. Please help them to have wisdom to know how we should um, respond going forward to um, minimize the damage to people's health, but also to help people out financially and economically as we move forward. Uh, please forgive us for those times we do fall short, and please help us to set a better example for those uh, that we come in contact with this week. It's in Christ that we pray. Amen.